Who's there? Nay, answer me. Stand and unfold yourself. Long live the king. Bernardo? He. Come most carefully upon your arm. It is now struck twelve. Get thee to bed, Francisco. For this relief, much thanks. Bitter cold, I am sick of fire. Have you had quiet guard? Not a mouse stirring. Well, good night. If you do meet to race on my cellars, the rivals of my watch, bid them make haste. I think I hear them. Stand ho, who's there? Friends to the scrub. And liegemen to the dame. Give you good night. Oh, farewell, honest soldier. Who hath relieved you? Bernardo has my place. Give you good night. Hola, Renato. Say what? Is Horatio there? A piece of him? <laughs> Welcome, Horatio. Welcome, good Marcellus. What? Has this thing appeared again tonight? I have seen nothing. Horatio says it is but our fantasy. It will not let belief take hold of him. Touching this dreaded sight twice seen of us. Therefore, I have entreated him along with us to watch the minutes of this night. That if again the apparition come, he may approve our eyes and speak to it. Touch, touch, will not appear. Sit down a while. Let us once again assail your ears that are so fortified against our story what we have two nights seen. Well, sit me down and let us hear Bernardo speak of this. Last night of all, Marcellus and myself, the bell they preaching one. Break thee off. Look where it come again. In the same figure like the king that's dead. Thou art a scholar, speak to it, Horatio. Looks it not like the king, mark it, Horatio. Most like. It harrows me with fear and wonder. It would be spoke to. Question it, Horatio. What art thou that usurps this time of night? Together in that fair and warlike form in which the majesty of very Denmark did sometimes march. By heaven, I charge thee, speak. It is offended. See, it stalks away. Stay! Speak! Speak, I charge thee, speak! It is gone. It will not answer. Oh my God, I might not disbelieve without the sensible and true avouch of mine own Is heart. it not like the king? As thou art to thyself. Such was the very armor he had on when he the ambitious Norway combated. So frowned he once when, in an angry pearl, he smote this lettered pollux on the ice. Thus twice before. And jumped at this dead hour. With martial stalk he hath gone by our watch. In what particular thought to work, I know not. But in the gross and scope of my opinion, this bode some strange eruption to our state. Good now. Sit down and tell me, he that knows, why this same strict and most observant watch so nightly toils the subject of the land. And why such daily cast of brazen cannon and foreign marts for implements of war? Why such impressive shipwrights whose sore task does not divide the Sunday from the week? What might be toward that this sweaty haste doth make the night's joint labourer with the day? Who is that can inform me? That can I. At least the whisper goes so. Our last king, whose image even but now appeared to us, was, as you know, by Fort and Brass of Norway, there to pricked on by a most amulet pride, dared to the combat, in which our valiant Hamlet, for so the sight of our known world esteemed him, did slay this Fort and Brass, who, by a sealed compact, well ratified by law and heraldry, did forfeit with his life all those his lands which he stood seized of to the conqueror, against the which a mighty combat was gauged by our king, which had returned to the inheritance of Fortinbras had he been vanquisher, as, by the same covenant and carriage of the article designed, his fell to Hamlet. Now, sir, young Fortinbras, of unimproved metal, hot and full, hath in the skirts of Norway, here and there, sharked up a list of lawless resolutes for food and diet to some enterprise that hath stomach in it, which is no other, as it doth well appear unto our state, but to recover of us 
by strong hand and terms compulsory, all those for said land so by his father lost. And this, I take it, is the main motive of our preparations, the source of this our watch, and the chief head of this post haste and rummage in the land. I think it be no other. Even so, well may it sort this portentous figure that comes armored through it watch. So like the king was and is the question of these wars. It's soft. Behold, though, where it comes again. I'll cross it, Dodd. Blast me. Stay, illusion! If thou hast any sound or use of voice, speak to me. If there be any good thing to be done that may to thee do grace and ease to me, speak to me. If thou art privy to thy country's fate, which happily foreknowing may avoid, oh speak. Or, if thou hast abhorred in thy life, extorted treasure in the womb of earth, for which they say you spread oft walk in death, speak of it. Stay and speak, stop it, Marcellus. Do I strike it with my partisan? Oh, if it will not stand. Tis here! Tis here! Tis gone! We do it wrong! Being so majestical, to offer it the show of violence. <coughs> For it is as the air, invulnerable, in our vain blows, malicious mockery. It was about to speak when the cock crew. And then it started like a guilty thing upon a fearful summons. It faded on the crowing of the cock. Break we our watch up, and by my advice, let us impart unto young Hamlet what we have seen tonight. For the spirit, dumb to us, will speak to him. Now follows that you know, young Fortinbras holding <coughs> a weak proposal of our work, or thinking by our dear late brother's death, and our state to be disjoint and out of frame. Colleague with the dream of his advantage, he hath not failed to pester us, with message importing the surrender of those lands lost by his father, with all bonds of law, to our most valiant brother. So much for him. Now, Laertes, what's the news with you? You told us of some suit. What is it, Laertes? You cannot speak of reason to the Dane and lose your voice. What wouldst thou beg, Laertes, that shall not be my offer, not thy asking? The head is not more native to the heart, the hand more instrumental to the mouth and as the throne of Denmark to thy father. What wouldst thou have, Laertes? My dread lord, your leave and favour to return to France, from whence, though willingly, I came to Denmark to show my duty in your coronation. Yet now I must confess that duty done, my thoughts and wishes bend again toward France, and bow them to your most gracious leave and pardon. Have you your father's leave? What says Polonius? He hath, my lord, wrung from me my slow lave by laborsome petition, and at last, upon his will, I sailed my hard consent. I do beseech you, give him leave to go. Take thy fair Laertes, time be thine, and thy best grace is spended at thy will. But now, my cousin Hamlet, and my son, a little more than kin, less than kind. How is it the clouds still hang on you? Not so, my lord. I'm too much in the sun. Good Hamlet, cast thy nighted colour off and let thine eyes look like a friend on Denmark. Not forever would thy bales leap seek for thy noble father in the dust. Thou knowest his common. All that lives must die, passing through nature to eternity. Aye, madam, it is common. Well, if it be, why seems it so particular with thee? Seems, Helen. Nay, it is. I know not seems. Tis not alone my inky cloak, good mother, nor customary suits of solemn black, nor windy suspiration of forced breath, no, nor the fruitful river from the eye, the dejected haviour of the visage, together with all my Forms, moods, shapes of grief that can denote me truly, these indeed seem. For they are actions that a man might play. 
and I have that within which passeth show, these but the trappings and the suits of woe. Tis sweet and commendable in your nature, Hamlet, to give these morning duties to your father. But you must know, your father lost a father, and that father lost, lost his. We pray you, throw to earth this unprevailing woe, and think of us as a father. For let the world take note, you are the most immediate to our throne, and with no less nobility of love than that which dearest father bears his son, do I impart towards you. For your intent in going back to school in Wittenberg is most retrograde to our desire. We beseech you, bend you to remain here in the cheer and comfort of our eye. Our chiefest courtier, cousin, and our son. Let not thy mother lose her prayers, Hamlet. I pray thee, stay with us. Go not to Wittenberg. I shall in all my best obey you, madam. <coughs> Why, it is a loving and fair reply. Be as ourself in Denmark. Madam, come. This gentle and unforced accord of Hamlet sits smiling to my heart. In grace whereof no joke unhealth that Denmark drinks today. But the great cannon to the clouds shall tell, and the kings rouse the heavens all through it again, re-speaking earthly thunder. Come away. Oh, that this too, too solid flesh would melt or resolve itself into a dew. Or that the everlasting had not fixed his cannon gainst self-slaughter. God. God. How weary. Stale. Flat and unprofitable seemed to me all the uses of the world. Fie! Fie! Tis an unweeded garden that grows to seed. Things rank and gross in nature possess it merely. That it should come to this. But two months dead. Nay. Not so much, not two. So excellent a king that was to this Hyperion to a satyr. So loving to my mother that he might not beteem the winds of heaven visit her face too roughly. Heaven and earth. As I remember, she would hang on him as if increase of appetite did grow by that which it fed on, and yet, within a month, let me not think on it. Frailty, thy name is woman. A little month. Ere the shoes were old, with which she followed my poor father's body, like Niobe, all tears. Why, she, God, a beast! which once discourse of reason would have mourned longer, married with my uncle, my father's brother, but no more like my father than I to Hercules. A little month. Ere the salt of unrighteous tears had left the flushing in her gored eyes, she married oh, wicked speed to post with such dexterity to incestuous sheets it is not, nor cannot come to good. But break my heart, for I must hold my tongue. Hail to your lordship. I am glad to see thee well. Horatio! Oh, I do forget myself! The same, my lord, and your poor servant ever. Sir. Good sir, we'll change that name with you. Make you from Wittenberg, Horatio. Marcellus! My good lord! It is good to see you. Good even, sir! For what in faith make you from Wittenberg? A truant disposition, good, my lord. <laughs> I would not hear your enemy say so. 
nor shall you do my heir such violence to make it trust or report against yourself. I know you are no truant. But what is your business in Elsinore? We'll teach you to drink deep and hear to bath. My lord, I came to see your father's funeral. Do not mock me, fellow student. I think you came to see my mother's wedding. Indeed, it followed hard upon. Thrift. Thrift, Horatio. The funeral baked meats did coldly furnish forth the marriage tables. Oh, that I'd see my dearest foe in heaven ere I saw that day, Horatio. My father. Methinks I see my father. Where, my lord? In my mind's eye, Horatio. I saw him once. He was a goodly king. He was a man. Take him for all in all, I shall not look upon his like again. My lord, I think I saw him yesternight. Saw who? My lord, the king, your father. The king, my father? Seized my admiration for a while with an attempt air, till I may deliver upon the witness of these gentlemen this marvel to you. For God's love, let me hear. Two nights together had these gentlemen Marcellus and Bernardo, on their watch in the dead vast of middle of the night, be thus encountered. <coughs> a figure like your father, armed at point exactly, cap a pay, appears before them, and with solemn march goes slow and stately by them. Thrice he walked by their oppressed and fair surprised eyes within his truncheon's length. Whilst they were still almost to jelly with the act of their stand, stand dumb and speak not to him. This to me in dreadful secrecy in part they did, and I with them the third night kept the watch, where, as they had delivered both in time, form of the thing, each word made true and good, the apparition comes. I knew your father. These hands are not more like. Where was this? My lord, upon the platform where we watched. Did you not speak to it? Oh, my lord, I did, but answer made it none. Which is very strange. As I do live, my honoured lord, tis true. And we did think it writ down on our duty to let you know of it. Very like. Very like, but this troubles me. Hold you the watch tonight. We, we do, do, my lord. Arms, say you. Arms, Arms my lord. lord. From top to toe. My lord, lord from, from head, head to foot. foot. Then you saw not his face. Oh, yes, my lord. He wore his beaver up. What? Looked he frowningly. Uh, Colton is more in sorrow than anger. Pale or red? Nay, very pale. And fixed his eyes upon you? Most constantly. Would that I'd been there. It would have much amazed you. Indeed. Indeed. Except stayed it long. Well, one with moderate haste might tell a hundred. Longer! Longer! Longer. Longer. I saw it. His beard was grizzled, no? It was, as I have seen in his life, a sable silvered. I will watch tonight. Perchance to a walk again. I warrant it will. If, and assume my noble father's person, I'll speak to him. Though hell itself should gape and bid me hold my peace. I pray you, if you have hitherto concealed this sight, let it be tenable in your silence still. Whatsoever else may hap tonight, give it understanding, but no tongue. I will requite your loves. Farewell. Upon the platform, twixt eleven and twelve, I'll visit you. Our duty to Farewell. your honour. Our duty to your honour. Your loves is mine to you. Farewell. Necessaries are embarked. Farewell. And sister, as the winds give benefit and convoy is assistant, do not sleep, but let me hear from you. Do you doubt that? Well, for Hamlet, and the trifling of his favour, hold it a fashion and a toy in blood, a violet in the youth of primy nature. Forward, not permanent, sweet, not lasting, the perfume and suppliance of a minute. No more. No more, but so. Think it no more. But you must fear, his greatness weighed, his will is not his own. For he himself is subject to his birth. He may not, as unvalued persons do, carve for himself. For on his choice depends the safety and health of this whole state. Then, why what loss your honour may sustain? If with too credent ear you list his songs, or lose your heart. Or your chaste treasure open to his unmastered importunity. 
fear it, Ophelia. Fear it, my dear sister, and keep you in the rear of your affection, out of the shot and danger of desire. Be wary then. Their safety lies in fear. Used to itself rebels, though none else near. I shall the effect of this good lesson keep as watchman to my heart. But, good my brother, do not, as some ungracious pastors do, show me the steep and thorny way to heaven, whiles, like a puffed and reckless libertine, himself the primrose path of dalliance treads, and wrecks not his own reed. Oh, fear me not. When I stay too long, I fear here my father comes. Here, here, Laertes, aboard, aboard for shame. The wine sits in the shoulder of your sail, and you are staying. There, my blessing with thee. And these few precepts in thy memory, see thou corrector. Give thy thoughts no tongue, nor any unproportioned thought is at. Be thou familiar, but by no means vulgar. Those friends thou hast, and their adoption tried, grapple them to thy soul with hopes of stale, but do not do thy palm with entertainment the which you hatch unfledged comrade. <laughs> Beware of entrance to a quarrel, but being in, that, that the opposed may be aware of thee. Give every man thy ear, but few thy vice. Take each man's censor, but reserve thy judgment. Costly thy habit as thy purse can buy, but not expressed in fancy. Rich, not gaudy, for the apparel oft proclaims the man, and they in France, of the best rank and station, or of a most select and generous chief in that. Neither a borrower nor a lender be, who alone oft loses both itself and friend, and borrowing dulls the edge of husbandry. This above all, to thine own self be true, and it must follow as the night the day thou canst not then be false to any man. Very well. My blessing says and listen to thee. I do most humbly take my leave, my the lord. The time invites you. Go, your servants tend. Farewell. And sister, remember what it is I have said to you. It is in my memory locked, and you yourself shall keep the key of it. Farewell. <coughs> uh, what is the failure he hath said to you? So please use something touching the Lord Hamlet. Ah, Mary, well bethought. Tis told me he hath very oft of late given private time to you, and you yourself have of your audience been most free and bounteous. What is between you? Give me up the truth. He hath, my lord of late, made many tenders of his affections. Affections? <laughs> you speak to the green girl, unsuited in such parlous circumstance. Do you believe his tenders, as you call them? My lord, he hath importuned me with love in a most honourable fashion. Aye, fashion you may call it. Go to, go to. And hath given countenance to his speech, my lord, with almost all the holy vows of heaven. Aye, spring just to catch woodcocks. I do know when the blood burns how prodigal the soul. Be somewhat scanter of your maiden presence. Set your entreatments at a higher rate than a command to parley. For Lord Hamlet believes so much in him that he is young. And with a larger tether may he walk than may be given you. In few, Ophelia, do not believe his vows. This is for all. I would not, in plain terms, from this time forth, have you so slander any moment lesser as to give words or talk with the Lord Hamlet. Look to it, I charge you, come your ways. I shall obey, my lord. Yeah, bite shrewdly. This is very cold. It is a nipping and eager air. What hour now? I think it likes a twelve. No, it has struck. Indeed? I heard it not. Then it nears the season wherein the spirit held his wont to walk. What does this mean, my lord? The king doth wake tonight and takes his rouse. 
And as he drains his drafts of Rhenish down, the kettle drum and the trumpet thus bray out the triumph of his pledge. Is it a custom? Aye, Mary, yes. But, to my mind, though I am native here and to the manor born, it is a custom more honoured in the breach than the observance. Look, my lord, he comes. Goblin Dan. Was he ears from heaven or blasts from hell? Be thy intents wicked or charitable. Thou comest in such a questionable shape, I will speak to thee. I'll call thee Hamlet! King! Father! Royal Dano, answer me! beckons you to go away with it, as if it's some impartment to desire to you alone. Look, with what courteous action it waves you to a more removed ground. But do not go with it. No, by no means. It will not speak. I will follow it. Do not, my lord. Why? What should be the fear? I do not set my life in a pin's feet. As for my soul, what can it do to that when a thing is immortal as itself? It waves me still, I will follow it. What if it tempts you toward the flood, my lord? Which the dreadful summer should the cliff that beetles o'er his base into the sea, and there assume some other horrible form that might deprive your sovereignty of reason and draw you into madness? Think of it! The very place puts toys of desperation the hot more motive into every brain that looks so many fathoms to the sea and hears it pour beneath. Do not speak. Go on, I follow thee. You shall not go, my lord. Off your hands. Be ruled, you shall not go. My faint cries out, by heaven I'll make a ghost of him that lets me. I set him away. Go on. I follow thee. Wax is desperate with imagination. Let's follow. Tis not fit thus to obey him. Have after. To what issue will this come? Something is rotten in the state of Denmark. Heaven will direct it. Nay, let's follow. Whither wilt thou lead me? Speak, I'll go no further. I am thy father's spirit, doomed for a certain term to walk the night, and for the day confined to fasting fires, till the foul crimes done in my days of nature are burnt and purged away, but that I am forbid to tell the secrets of my prison house. I could a tale unfold, whose lightest word would harrow up thy soul, freeze thy young blood, make thy two eyes like stars start from their spheres. I nodded and combined locks to part, and each particular hair to stand on end like quills upon the fretful porpentine. But this eternal blazon must not be to ears of flesh and blood. List, list. If thou didst ever thy dear father love, revenge his foul and most unnatural murder. Murder! Murder most foul as in the best it is, but this most foul, strange and unnatural. Haste me to know it, that I, with wings as swift as meditation or thoughts of love, may swoop to my revenge. It is given out that Sleeping in my orchard, a serpent stung me. So the whole ear of Denmark is by a forged process of my death, rightly abused. But know thou, noble youth, the serpent that did sting thy father's life, now wears his crown. My prophetic soul. My uncle. I, that incestuous that adulterate beast. Thus was I sleeping 
by a brother's hand of life, of crown, of queen, at once dispatched with all my imperfections on my head. If thou hast nature in thee, bear it not. Let not the royal bed of Denmark be a couch for luxury and damned incest. Whosoever thou pursuest this act, taint not thy mind, nor let thy soul contrive against thy mother aught. Leave her to heaven, unto those thorns that in her bosom lodge to prick and sting her. Fare thee well at once. Adieu. Adieu. Hamlet, remember me. Oh, uh, what else must I couple hell? Hold, hold my heart. Hi, the poor ghost, while memory holds a seat. In this distracted globe, remember thee. Most pernicious woman. Oh, villain. Villain! <coughs> Smiling! Damned villain! That one may smile. And smile and smile and be a villain. I have sworn it. My lord. My lord. Heaven secure them. Lord Edward. So be it. Hello. Hello. Oh, Hello. Come. Hello. Come. How is my noble lord? What news, my lord? There's ne'er a villain dwelling in all of Denmark, but he's an errant knave. My lord, there needs no ghost to come from the grave to tell us this. I tell you. Grant me one poor request. What is my lord? We will. Never make known what you have seen tonight. My lord, we will not. Nay. Swear it. In faith, my lord, not I. Nor I, my lord, in faith. Upon my sword. We have sworn, my lord. Indeed, already. upon my sword, swear. Swear. Now, dear boy, sayst thou so, true baby? Come on. You hear this fellow in the cellarage? Consent to swear. Swear. Because the oath, my lord, never to speak of that what you have seen tonight. Swear on my sword. Swear. Come hither, friends, and once more lay your hands upon my sword. Never to speak of that which you have seen tonight. Swear. Swear. It's working the earth so fast. A worthy pioneer. Once more removed, friends. Day and night, but this is wondrous strange. As a stranger, give it welcome. There are more things in heaven and earth, Horatio, than are dreamt of in your philosophy. Swear! Swear! Rest! Rest! Determined spirit. My love, I do commend me to you. The time is out of joint. Oh, cursed spite, that ever I was born to set it right. Now come, we go together. Oh, no, Ophelia. What's 
the matter? My lord, my lord, I have been so affrighted. With what in the name of God? My lord, as I was sewing in my closet, Lord Hamlet with his doublet all unbraced, no hat upon his head, his stockings fouled, ungarted, and down jibed to his ankle, pale as his shirt, his knees knocking each other, with a look so piteous and purport as if he had been loosed out of hell to speak of horrors, he comes before me. Mad for thy love. I do not know, my lord, but truly I do fear it. What said he? He took me by the wrist and held me hard. Then goes he to the length of all his arm, and with his other hand thus o'er his brow, he falls to such perusal of my face as he would draw it. Long stayed he so. At last, a little shaking of mine arm, and thrice his head waving up and down, he raised a sigh so piteous and profound as it did seem to shatter all his bulk and end his being. That done, he lets me go, and with his head thus o'er his shoulder turned, he seemed to find his way without his eyes, for out of doors he went without their helps, and to the last bended their light on me. This is the very ecstasy of love, whose violent property fordoes itself and lades the will to desperate undertakings as oft as any passing under heaven that doth afflict our natures. I am sorry. What? Have you given him any hard words of that? No, my lord, but as you did command, I did repel his letters and deny his access that to... That hath made him mad. Come, go we to the king. This must be known. He tells me, my dear Gertrude, that he hath found the head and thought of all your son's distemper. I doubt it is no other but the main. His father's death and our poor hasty marriage. <laughs> my liege and madam, to expostulate what majesty should be, what duty is, why day is day, night night, and time is time, or not in but to west, night, day, and time. Therefore, since brevity is the soul of wit, and tediousness the limbs and outward flourishes, I will be brief. Your noble son is mad. Mad call I it, for to define true madness, what is but to be not an else but mad, but let that go. Uh, more matter with less art. Madam, I swear I use no art at all, that he is mad, tis true, tis true, tis pity, and pity tis, tis true. A foolish figure, but farewell it, for I will use no art. Mad, let us grant him then, and no remains that we find out the cause of this effect, or rather say the cause of this defect. For this effect, <coughs> defective comes by cause. Thus it remains, and the remainder thus perpend. I have a daughter. Have, while well, she is mine, <laughs> who in her duty and obedience, Mark, hath given me this. Now, gather and surmise. To the celestial and my soul's idol, the most beautified Ophelia. That's an ill phrase, a vile phrase. Beautified is a vile phrase, but you shall hear this. In her excellent white bosom. Came this from Hamlet to her? Good madam, stay a while. I will be faithful. Doubt thou the stars are fire. Doubt that the sun doth move. Thou truth to be a liar, but never doubt I love. A dear Ophelia, I am ill at these numbers. I have not art to reckon up my groans. But that I love thee best, O most best, a dear Hamlet. This, in obedience, hath my daughter shown me, and more above hath the solicitants, as they fell out by time, <coughs> by means, and place, all given to mine ear. But how has she received his love? What do you think of me? As of a man faithful and honorable. I would fain prove so. But what might you think when I had seen this hot love on the wing? What might you think? No, I went round to work, 
and my young mistress, thus I did bespake. Lord Hamlet is a prince, out of thy star, this must not be. And then I praised gave her, that she should lock herself from his resort, admit no messengers, receive no tokens, which done, she took the fruits of my advice, and he, repulsed, a short tale to make, fell into a sadness, then into a fast, thence to a watch, thence into a wakeness, thence to a lightness, and by this declension, into the madness wherein now he raves, and all we know. Do you think tis this? Maybe. Very likely. How may we try it further? You know, sometimes he walks four hours together here in the lobby. So he does indeed. At such a time, I'll loose my daughter to him. Be you and I behind an artist, then mark the encounter. If he love her not, and bear not from his reason fall thereon, let me be no assistant for a state, but keep a farm in cottages. We will try it. Look, we're saddening the poor rich that come. Away, I do beseech you both, away. I'll board him presently. Ah, oh, give me leave. How does my good lord Hamlet? Well, God of mercy. Do you know me, my lord? Excellent. Well, you are a fishmonger. Not I, my lord. Then I would you were so honest. Honest, my lord. I, sir, to be honest as this world goes is to be one man picked out of ten thousand. That's very true, my lord. For if the sun breed maggots and a dead dog, being a good kissing carrion, have you a daughter? I have, my lord. Let her not walk in the sun. Conception is a blessing, but not as your daughter may conceive. Friend, look to it. Oh, say you by that, still harping on my daughter. Yet he knew me not at first. He said I was a fishmonger. He is far gone, far gone. And truly, in my youth, I suffered much extremity for love. Very near this. I'll speak to him again. What do you read, my lord? Words. <laughs> words, words. Uh, what is the matter, my lord? Between who? I mean, I mean the matter that you read, my lord. Slander, sir. For the satirical rogue says here that old men have grey beards, their faces are wrinkled, their eyes plunging thick amber and plum tree gum, <laughs> and they have plentiful lack of wit, together with most weak hands. All the which, sir, though I most powerfully and potently believe, I hold it not honesty to have it thus set down. For you yourself, sir, should be as old as I am, if like a crab you could go backward. <laughs> this be madness, yet there is method in it. Uh, will you walk out in the air, my lord? Into my grave. Indeed, that is out of the air. How pregnant sometimes his replies are, a happiness that often madness hits on, which reason and sanity could not so prosperously be delivered of. I will leave him, and suddenly contrive a means of mating between him and my daughter. My honorable lord, I will most humbly take my leave of you. You cannot, sir, take from me anything that I would more willingly part with all, except my life, except my life. Except my life. Fare you well, my lord. <coughs> These tedious old fools. I am but mad north northwest. When the wind is southerly, I know a hawk from a handsaw. I have of late, but wherefore I know not, lost all my mirth, forgo all custom of exercise. And indeed it goes so heavily on my disposition that this goodly frame 
the earth seems to me a sterile promontory. This most excellent canopy. The air, look you, this overhanging firmament. This majestic roof fretted with gold fire. Seems to me nothing but a foul and pestilent congregation of vapors. What a piece of work is man. How noble in reason. How infinite in faculty. In form and moving. How express and admirable. In action. How like an angel. In apprehension. How like a god. The beauty of the world. The paragon of animals. And yet to me. What is this quintessence of dust? Man delights not me. No woman neither. My lord, I have news to tell you. My lord, I have news to tell you. When Rossius was an actor... The actors are the... come hither, my lord. This, this upon mine honor. Came each actor upon his ass. The best actors in the world, either for tragedy, comedy, history, pastoral. Pastoral, comical, historical, pastoral, tragical, historical, tragical, comical, historical, pastoral, scene individable or poem unlimited. Seneca cannot be too heavy nor plot us too light. For the law of writ and the liberty, these are the only men. You are welcome, masters. Welcome all. Oh, it is good to see you. Welcome, old friend. Thy face is valanced since I saw thee last. Come thou to bed me in Denmark? My lady and my mistress. My lady. Your ladyship is nearer to heaven than when I saw you last. <laughs> Come, a speech. Come, show us your quality, a passionate speech. Come. What speech, my lord? I heard you speak a speech once, but it was never acted. Or if it was, not above the once. The play I remember please not the million. It was caviar to a general. But it was, as I remember it, and others whose voice cried in over the top of mine, a most excellent play. Well digested and seen, set down with as much modesty as cunning. One speech in it I chiefly loved was Aeneas's tale to Dido. It begins with Pyrrhus. The rugged Pyrrhus. He whose sable arms, black as his purpose, did the night resemble as he lay couched in the ominous horse. With eyes like carbuncles, the hellish purse old grandsire Prion seeks. So proceed you! Lord God, my lord, well spoken, with good accent and good discretion. Anon he finds him, striking two short at Greeks, his antique sword, rebellious to his arm, lies where its paws repugnant to command. Unequal matched, Pyrrhus at Priam drives, in rage strikes wide, and with the whiff and wind of his fell sword, the unnerved father falls. So after Pyrrhus pause, aroused vengeance sets him new at work, and the, the, the of Mars's armor, like proof eternal, the Pyrrhus's sword fell down on Priam's bleeding head. And on he finds him, and it was too much, too much, and he could not proceed. This is too long, too long. <laughs> it shall do the barber with your beard. I pray you, say on. He's for a jig or a tail of bawdry, or he sleeps. Come, to Hecuba. But who has seen the Moblet Queen? The Moblet Queen. That's good. Moblet Queen is good. Run barefoot up and down, threatening the flames with bissed room. A clout upon that head where late the diadem stood, and for a robe about her length. And all old teamed loins. A blanket in the alarm of fear caught up. Who this had seen with tongue in venom steeped against fortune's state would treason have pronounced. But if the gods themselves did see her then, 
When she saw Paris make malicious sport, in mincing with his sword, her husband's limbs. The instant burst of clamour that she made. <laughs> Unless things mortal move them not at all, what hath made milch the burning eyes of heaven and passion in the gods? Look whether he's not torn to his colour and has tears in his eyes. Pray you no more. Which is well. <laughs> I'll have thee speak the rest soon. Good my lord. Will you see these players well bestowed? Look, you use them well, for they are the abstract and brief chronicles of our time. After your death, we better have a bad epitaph than their ill report whilst you live. My lord, I will use them according to their desert. God's bodkins, man, much better. Use every man after his desert, and who shall escape whipping? Use them to your own honour and dignity. The less they deserve, the more merit is in your bounty. Take them in. Come, sirs. And follow him, friends. We'll have play tomorrow night. Dost thou hear me, old friend? Canst thou play the murder of Gonzago? Aye, my lord. We'll have tomorrow night. You could, for a need, study a speech of some dozen or sixteen lines that I would sit down and insert in it, could you not? Aye, my lord. Follow this, lord. And look, you mock him not. Now, I am alone. Oh, what a rogue and peasant slave am I. Is it not monstrous that this player, but in a fiction, in a dream of passion, could force his soul so to his own conceit that from her working all his visage waned? Tears and eyes, distraction and aspect, broken voice, it's suiting with all forms to his conceit. All for nothing, for Hecuba. What's he to Hecuba, or Hecuba to him, that she, he should weep for her? What would he do, had he the cue and the motive for passion that I had? He would drown the stage in tears, cleave the general air with horrid speech, make mad the guilty, appall the free, and amaze indeed the very faculties of ears and eyes. Yet I, what an ass am I. I sure, this is most brave. I, the son of a dear father murdered, prompted to my revenge by heaven and hell, must, like a whore, unpack my heart with words and fall about cursing like a scully and a drab fire it. I have heard that guilty persons seated at a play have by the very cunning of the scene been struck so to the soul that they have presently proclaimed their malefactions. For murder, though it hath no tongue, will speak with most miraculous organ. I'll have these players play something like the murder of my father before mine uncle. I'll observe his looks. I'll tent him to the quick of he, but blench, I know my course. This spirit I have seen may be the devil, for the devil hath the power to assume a pleasing shape, and yea, perhaps through my weakness and my melancholy, for he is potent in such spirits, abuses me to damn me. I'll have grounds more relative than this. The play's the thing, wherein I'll catch the conscience of the king. Ophelia, walk you here, Gracia, so please you, we will bestow ourselves. Read on this book, that show us such an exercise may color your loneliness. We are off to blame in this, tis too much proved that with Devotion's visage and pious axiom, we do sugar o'er the devil himself. How smart a lash that speech does give my conscience. I hear him coming, let's withdraw, my lord. To be or not to be, 
That is the question. Whether tis nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, or take arms against a sea of troubles, and by opposing end them, to die, to sleep no more, and by a sleep to say we end the heartache and the thousand natural shocks that flesh is heir to. It is a consummation devoutly to be wished, to die, to sleep, to sleep perchance to dream, for in that sleep of death, what dreams may come when we have shuffled off this mortal coil must give us pause. There's the respect that makes calamity of so long life. For who would bear the whips and scorns of time, the oppressor's wrongs, the proud man's contumely, the pangs of despised love, the law's delight? the insolence of office, and the spurns that patient merit of the unworthy takes, when he himself might his quietus make with a bare bodkin. Who would Fardel's bear to grunt and sweat under a weary life, but that the dread of something after death, the undiscovered country from whose born no traveller returns, puzzles the will makes us rather bear those ills we have than fly to others we know not of. Thus conscience does make cowards of us all. And thus the native hue of resolution is cyclid o with the pale cast of thought and enterprises of great pith and moment. With this regard their currents turn awry and lose the name of action. Ophelia, for thy orisons be all my sins remembered. But my lord, how does your honour for this many a day? I humbly thank you. Well, well, well. My lord, I have remembrances of yours that I have long and long to re-deliver. I pray you now receive them. No, not I. I never gave you aught. My honoured lord, you know right well you did. And with them words of so sweet breath composed as make things more rich. The perfume lost, take these again. To the noble mind which gifts wax poor when givers prove unkind. <laughs> Are you honest? My lord? Are you fair? What means your lordship? That if you be honest and fair, your honesty shall admit no discourse to your beauty. With beauty, my lord, have better discourse than with honesty. Naturally. I loved you once. Indeed, my lord, you made me believe so. You should not have believed me. We cannot so inoculate our old stock, but we shall relish of it. I loved you not. I was the more deceived. Get thee to a nunnery. Why wouldst thou be a breeder of sinners? I am myself indifferent, honest, yet I could accuse me of such things it were better my mother had not born. I'm very proud, revengeful, ambitious, with more offenses in my back than I have thoughts to put them in, imagination to give them shape, time to hack them in. Should fellows as I do fall in between earth and heaven? We are errant knaves all. Believe none of us. Go thy ways to a nunnery. Where's your father? At home, my lord. Let the doors be shut on him, that he may play the fool nowhere but in his own house. Farewell. Help him, you sweet. If you must, marry. I give thee this plague for thy dowry. Be thou as pure as ice, as chaste 
as no thou shalt not escape calumny. Go thy ways to another. If thou dost marry, marry a fool. The wise men know well enough what monsters you make of us. Go thy ways to another. Farewell. Heavenly powers restore him. I have heard of your paintings too well enough. God gives you one face and you make yourselves another. You amble, you jig, you lisp, and you nickname God's creatures. You make your wantonness your ignorance. Go to! I'll have no more, and it hath made me mad. I say we shall have no more marriages. Those that are married already, all but one shall live. The rest shall keep as they are. Get thee to a nunnery. Go. What a noble mind is hero from courtiers, soldiers. Scholars, eye, tongue, sword, the expectancy and rose of the fair state, the glass of fashion, and the mould of form, the observed of all observers, quite, quite down. Now, ladies most deject and wretched, that suck the honey of his music vows. Now see that noble and most sovereign reason like sweet bells jangled out of tune and harsh. That unmatched form and feature of blown youth blasted with ecstasy. And woe is me. I have seen what I have seen. And to see what I see. Love, the affections do not that way tend. <laughs> Nor what he spake, though it lacked form a little, was not like madness. There's something in his soul, over which his melancholy sits on brood, and, I do doubt, the hatch and disclose will be some danger. For which to prevent, I have in quick determination thus set it down. He shall, with speed, to England, for the demand of our neglected tribute, haply the seas and countries different with variable objects, shall expel this something settled matter in his heart, whereon his brain still beating puts him thus in fashion of himself. What think you on it? It shall do well, but yet do I believe the origin and commencement of his grief sprung from neglected love. And now, Ophelia, he need not tell us what Lord Hamlet said. We heard it all. My lord, do as you please. But if you hold it fit, after the play, let his queen mother all alone entreat him to show his grief. Let her be wrong with him. And I'll be placed, so please you, in the ear of all their conference. If she find him not, to England send him. Or confine him where your wisdom best shall think. It shall be so. Madness in great ones must not unwatched go. I pray you, as I pronounced it to you, trippingly on the tongue. If you but now that, as many of your players are wont to do, I had as leap the town crier spoke my lines. Do not soar too greatly at the air thus, but use all gently. For in the very torrent, tempest, as I might say, the whirlwind of passion, you must acquire and beget a temperance that may give it smoothness. I warrant your honour. Be not too tame, neither. But let your own discretion be your tutor. Suit so the action to the word, the word to the action, with the special observance that you owe a step not the modesty of nature. Such a thing is from the purpose of playing, which was and is at the first and last to.
to hold as it were a mirror up to nature, to show virtue her own feature, scorn her own image, in the age and body of our time, its form and pressure. I hope we've reformed that indifferently with us, sir. Oh, reform it altogether. Let those that play your clown speak no more than a set down. For there be some among them that are wont to laugh, to set some barren quantity of spectators to laugh, when there be some necessary question of the play, be then to be considered. It is villainous, and shows a pitiful lack of ambition in the fool that uses it. Go. Make you ready. Give me that man who is not passion's slave, and I will wear him in my heart's core. Aye, in my heart of hearts as I do thee. There's a play tonight before the king. One act comes near the circumstance I have told thee of my father's death. I pray thee, when thou cease this act of foot, even to the very comment of your soul, observe mine uncle. If his occulted guilt do not itself unkennel in one speech, it is a damned spirit we have seen, and my imagination is as foul as Vulcan's stithy. I pray thee, observe. I, mine eyes, will fix upon his face, and afterwards we will our judgments join in censure of his seeming. Well, my lord, if you still ought, whilst the play is playing and scape detecting, I will pay the theft. Now come to the play. I must be idle. Give me a place. How fares our cousin Hamlet? Well, excellent in faith. Of the chameleon's dish, I eat the air. Promise, Cram. You cannot feed capons, so. I have nothing with this answer, Hamlet. These words are not mine. No, nor mine now. My lord, you played once in the university, sir. Ah, that did I, my lord, and was accounted a good act. What did you enact? I did enact Julius Caesar. I was killed in the capital. Brutus killed me. It was a brute part of him to kill, so capital a card there. <laughs> are the players ready? Come hither, my dear Hamlet. Sit by me. No, mother. Here's metal more attractive. <laughs> Lady, may I lie in your lap? No, my lord. I mean my head upon your lap. Aye, my lord. Do you think I meant country matters? Well, I think nothing, my lord. Well, there's a fair thought to lie between woman's legs. What is, my lord? Nothing. You are merry, my lord. Who I? Aye, my lord. Oh, God, you're our only jig maker. What should a man do but be merry? For look you how happy my mother looks. My father died these two hours. Nay, it is twice two months, my lord. So long. Then let the devil wear black, for I'll have a suit of sables. Heavens. It's two months dead and not forgotten yet. And for our clemency, here, stooping to your tragedy, we beg your hearing patiently. Is this the prologue or posy of a ring? It's brief, my lord. As woman's love. Full thirty times doth Phoebus cart round Neptune's salt wash and Pallas orbit round. And thirty dozen moons with borrowed sheen about the world hath times twelve thirties been. Since love our hearts and hymen did our hands unite commutual in most sacred bands. So many journeys may the sun and moon make us again count o'er ere love be done. But woe is me, you are so sick of late, so far from cheer and from your former state, that I distrust you. Yet, though I distrust, discomfort you, my lord, if nothing must. For women's fear and love holds quantity in neither aught or in extremity. Where love is great, the littlest doubts are fear. Where little fears grow great, great love grows there. Faith, I must leave thee, love, and shortly stew 
My opera powers their functions leave to do. And thou shalt live in this fair world behind, honoured, beloved, and happily won as kind for husband oh, shall be. found rest. Such love must needs be treason in my breast. In second husband, let me be accursed. None wed the second, but who killed the first? The instances that second marriage move are base respects of thrift and none of love. A second time I kill my husband dead when second husband kisses me in bed. I do believe you think what now you speak, but what we do determine, oft we break. Our thoughts are ours, their ends none of our own. So think thou wilt no second husband wed, but die thy thoughts when thy first lord is dead. Nor earth to give me food, nor heaven light, sport and repose lock from me day and night. To desperation turn my trust and hope, and anchor's cheer in prison be my scope. Both here and hence pursue me lasting strife, if once a widow ever I be wife. If she should break it now. Tis deeply sworn. Sweet, leave me here a while. My spirits grow dull, and fain I would beguile the tedious day with sleep. Sleep rock thy brain, and never come this chance between us twain. Madam, how like you the play? The lady protests too much, methinks. Oh, but she'll keep her word. Have you heard the argument? Is there no offence in it? No. No offence at all. They do but jest. Poison in jest. What do you call the play? The mouse trap. Tis a knavish piece of work, but what of that? Your Majesty and we that have free souls, as such as us not, let the gall of jade wince, our withers are in run. This is one Lucianus, nephew to the king. You're as good as Chorus, my lord. I could interpret between you and your love if I could see the puppet stallion. You are keen, you are keen. It would cost you a groaning to take off my edge. Still better and worse. As you must take your husband's. Come, murderer, begin! He poisons him in the garden for his estate. You shall see anon how the murderer gets the love of Gonzago's wife. The king rises. What, freighted with false fire? How fit, my lord? Give her the play. Lights. Lights. Give me some lights. Lights. Away. I will take the ghost's word a thousand pound. Didst perceive. Very well, my lord. Upon the talk of poison. I did very well note him. Come, music. Come, recorders. If the king likes not the comedy, then perchance he likes it not purdy. Come, music! God bless you, sir. My lord, the queen would speak with you, and presently. Do you see yonder cloud that's shaped like a camel? <laughs> By the mass, and it is like a camel indeed. Methinks it is like a weasel. It is back like a weasel. Or like a whale? Very likely. <laughs> Then I will come to my mother by and by. Fool me to the top of my bed. I will come by and by. I will say so. By and by is easily said. Now is a very witchy time of night. When churchyards open, hell itself breathes contagion to this world. Now how could I drink hot blood and do such bitter business as the day would shudder to look upon? Soft. To my mother. Hold. Hold my heart. Lose not your purpose. Let never the soul of Nero enter this firm bosom. <laughs> Let me be cruel, not unnatural. I will speak daggers to her, but use none. My heart and tongue in this be hypocrites. My words, soever she be shent, to give them seals, never my soul consent. I like him not. Nor stands it safe with us to let his madness range. 
My lord, he's going to his mother's closet. Behind the address, I'll convey myself to hear the process and warrant shall tax him home. I'll call upon you ere you go to bed and tell you what I know. Thanks. Dear my lord. Oh, my offense is rank. Smells to heaven. It hath the primal eldest curse upon it. A brother's murder. Pray can I not, though inclination be sharp as will. Stronger guilt defeats my strong intent. Can I command to double business bound? I stand in pause where I shall first begin. And both neglect. What if this cursed hand was thicker than itself with brother's blood? Is there not rain enough in the sweet heavens to wash it white as snow? The form of prayer can serve my turn. Forgive me my foul murder. It cannot be, since I am still possessed of those effects for which I did the murder. My crown. Mine own ambition, and my queen. May one be pardoned and retain the offence. Try what repentance can. What can it not? Yet what can it when one cannot repent? Oh, wretched state. The bosom black as death. Limed soul that's struggling to be free art more engaged. Help, angels! Make a say. Bow stubborn knees. Heart with strings of steel. Be soft as sinews of the newborn babe. All may be well. A villain kills my father, and for this, I, his sole son, send the same villain to heaven. This is hire and salary, not revenge. He took my father grossly, full of bread, his crimes broad blown as flush as may. How his audit stand, who knows, save heaven. But in our circumstance and course of thought, tis heavy with him. And I now to take him in the purging of his soul when he is fit and seasoned for passage? No. Up the sword, and no doubt a more horrid head. And he is or in drunk, or in a rage, or in the incestuous pleasure of his bed, and swear, gambling, or about some act that hath no chance of salvation in it, then trip him, that his heels may kick at him, and his soul is damned and black as hell whereto it goes. Words fly up, my thoughts remain below. Words without thought, never to heaven go. You 
will come straight. Look, you lay home to him. Tell him his pranks have been too broad to bear with, and that your grace has strained and stood between much hate in him. I'll sconce me even here. Pray you. Be round with him. I warrant you. Mother. Fear me not. But draw a hate Mother. in him. Now, mother, what's the matter? Hamlet, thou hast thy father much offended. Mother, thou hast my father much offended. Come, come. You answer with an idle tongue. Go, go. You question with a wicked tongue. Why, how now, Hamlet? What's the matter now? Have you forgot me? No. By the rood, not so. You are the queen. Your husband's brother's wife. And, were it not so, you are my mother. Nay, I'll set those two that can Come, come, me. set you down! You shall not budge! You go not until I hold up a glass where you may see the inmost part of you. What would thou do? Thou wilt not murder me. Help! 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 help. And now a wreck! Oh. Dead for a ducat! Dead! Oh! Well, I'm slain. What hast thou done? Nay, I know not. Is the king? Oh, what a rash and bloody deed is this? A bloody deed? Almost as bad, good mother, as kill a king and marry with his brother. As kill a king? Aye, twas my word. Thou <laughs> oh, wretched, rash, intruding fool! Well, I took thee for thy better. Take thy fortune. Thou finds to be too busy some danger. Leave the wringing of your hands. Peace. Sit you down, and I will wring your heart if I can, if it be made of penetrable stuff. The damned custom hath not brassed it so that it is proof and bulwark against sense. What have I done that thou darest wag thy tongue and noise so rude against me? An act that blurs the grace and blush of modesty. Honey, what act that roars so loud and thunders in the Indies? You are eyes without feeling. Feeling without sight, ears without hands or eyes, smelling sounds all. One part of one's true sense could not so mope. Oh, shame. Where is thy blush? Speak no more. Thou hast turned my eyes into my very soul. There I see such black and grained spots as will not leave their tears. But to live in the rank sweat of an unseemed bed, stooped in corruption, honey and making love over the nasty sty. Speak no more! These words like daggers enter in my ears, no more, a sweet villain And a murderer, a slave that is not twentieth part of the time to your precedent lord. A cut purse of the empire and rule. From the precious shelf, the diadem stolen, put it in his pocket! No more! And came of shreds and patches! Save Follow me with your heavenly wind, you. What would your gracious figure? Hello? He is mad. Do not cut your tardy son to chide. Speak. Speak to her, Hamlet. How stupid you know. Alas, how is for you? You do bend your eye on vacancy. Do you walk away, dear woman? 
How pale he glares! Do you see nothing there? No. Yet all there is, I see. No, nothing here, neither. No, nothing but ourselves. Look. Look you there. My father. Been as habit as he lived. He goes, even now, out, out of the portal. This, the very coinage of the brain, this bodiless creation ecstasy is very coming in. Ecstasy. My pulse, as yours, doth keep temperate time and makes his healthful music. It is not madness that I have uttered. Confess yourself to heaven. Repent what is past. Avoid what is come. And do not spread the compost on the weeds to make them ranker. Oh, Hamlet, thou hast cleft my heart in twain. Throw away the worse part of it and live the purer in the other. Good night. But go not to my uncle's bed. Assume a virtue, if you have it not. If, if you are desirous to be blessed, I'll blessing beg of you. For this same Lord I do repent. But heaven hath seen it fit to punish me with this, this with me, that I must be its scourge and minister. I will bestow him and answer well the murder that I gave. So again, good night. I must be cruel, only to be kind. Thus bad begins and worse remains behind. One word more. What shall I do? Let the bloat king tempt you again to bed. Pinch wanton in your cheeks, call you his mouse, and for a pair of wretchy kisses, or paddling your neck with his damned fingers, make you to ravel this matter out. But I am not in madness, but mad in craft. For good he knew. Be thou assured, if words be made of breath, breath of life, I have no life to breathe what thou hast said to me. I must to England. You know this? I had forgot. Tis so concluded on. This lord will send me back. I'll lump the guts into the neighbouring room. Good night. Indeed, this counsellor is most silent, most still, and most grave. There was in life a foolish, prating knave. Come, sir, to draw toward an end with you. Good night, my What got you? How does Hamlet? Mad is the sea and wind when both contend which is the mightier. Then this lawless fit behind the arras hearing something stir. He whips out his rapier, cries, A rat! A rat! And in this brainish apprehension kills the unseen good old man. Oh, heavy deep. Had been so with us, had we been there. His liberty is full of threats to all, to you, yourself, to us, to everyone. And shall this bloody deed be answered? Gertrude, come away. Son, no sooner shall the mountains touch, but we must ship him hence, and this vile deed all our majesty and skill we must countenance and excuse. 
I'm away. His soul is full of discord and dismay. I have sent to seek him and to find the body. How dangerous it is that this man goes loose. Yet must not we put the strong law on him. He's loved as a distracted multitude who like not in judgment but their eyes. Where it is so, the offender's scourge is weighed, but never the offence. To bear all smooth and even, the sudden sending him away must seem deliberate pause. Disease is desperate grown. By desperate appliance I relieved, or well, not at all. Now, Hamlet, where's Polonius? At supper. At supper? Where? Not where he eats, but where he is eaten. Even now, a certain convocation of politic worms are eaten at him. Your worm is your best emperor of the diet. We fat all creatures else for us. We fat ourselves for maggots. Your fat king and your lean beggar is but variable service. Two dishes, but to one table. That's the end. Alas, alas. Man may fish with the worm that hath eat of a king, the cat of the fish that hath fed off that worm. What dost you mean by this? Nothing. But to show you how a king may go a progress through the guts of a beggar. Where is Polonius? In heaven. Send hither to sea. If your messenger find him not, seek in the other place yourself. But, indeed, if you find him not within a month, you will know him as you go up the stairs to the lobby. Hamlet! This deed, for thine especial safety, which we do tender, as we dearly agree for that which thou hast done, must send thee hence with fiery quickness. Therefore prepare thyself. The bark is ready, the wind is at help, the associates ten. Everything is bent for England. For England? I am it. Good. So is it if thou knewst our purpose? I see a cherub that sees them. But come, for England. Farewell, mother. Thy loving father, Hammond. My mother. Father and mother is man and wife. Man and wife is one flesh, and so my mother. Come, for England. Should I your true love know from another one? By his cockle hat and staff and his sandal show. Alas, sweet lady, what imports the soul? Say you, nay, pray you, mark. He is dead and gone, lady, he is dead and gone. At his head a grass green turf, at his heels a stone. Nay, but if he pray you, mark. White as shroud as the mountain snow, larded with sweet flowers, which the wet to the grave did go with true love showers. Alas, my lord, look here. How do you, pretty lady? Well, God ill you. They say the owl was a baker's daughter. Lord, we know what we are, but know not what we may be. God be at your table. In siege upon her father. I pray you, let's have no more words of this, but when they ask you what it means, say you this. Tomorrow is St. Valentine's Day, all in the morning for time, and I am made at your window to be your valentine. Then up your rose and don this clothes and duck the chamber door. Let in the maid that out a maid never departed more. Pretty Ophelia. Indeed, La, without an oath, I'll make an end on it. By G's and by St. Charity, alack and fie for shame. Young men will do it if they come to it. By cock they are to blame. Quoth she, before you tumbled me, you promised me to wed. And so I were done. 
by yonder sun, and thou hadst not come to my bed. How long has she been thus? We must be patient. I hope all will be well. I cannot choose but weep. To think they should lay him in the cold ground. My brother shall know of it. And so, I thank you for your good counsel. Coach! Good night, sweet ladies. Good night, ladies. Good night. Good night. Oh, this is the poison of deep grief. It springs all from her father's death. Gertrude, Gertrude. When sorrows come, they come not single spies, but in battalions. First, her father slain. Next, your son gone, and he the most violent author of his own just remove. Dear Gertrude, this, like to a murdering piece, in many places gives me superfluous death. Where is this king? Give me my father. Calmly, Laertes. That drop of blood that's calm proclaims me bastard. Christ cuckold to my father, brands the harlot even here between the chaste, unsmirched brow of my true mother. What is the cause, Laertes, that thy rebellion looks so giant-like? Let him go, Gertrude. Do not fear our person. That such divinity doth hedge a king that treason can but peep to what it would as little of his will. Tell me, Laertes, why thou art thus incensed. Let him go, Gertrude. Speak, man. Where is my father? Dead. But not by him. Let him demand his fill. How came he dead? I'll not be juggled with. To hell allegiance. Vows <coughs> to the blackest devil. Conscience and grace to the profoundest pit. I dare damnation. Through this point I stand that both the worlds I give to negligence. Let come what comes, only I'll be revenged most thoroughly for my father. Laertes, if thou desires to know the certainty of thy father's death, this written thy revenge, that swoop stake, you will draw both friend and foe, winner and loser, from but his enemies. <coughs> will you know them then? To his good friends, thus wide I ope my arms. Now you speak like a good child and a true gentleman, that I am guiltless of your father's death and am most sensible in grief for it shall as level to your judgment pierce as they does to your eye. <laughs> Dear maid, kind sister, sweet Ophelia. Barefaced on the bear. Hey, nonny, 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 hey, nonny. And in his grave rained many a tear. Fare you well. Hello, thou hind. Did's persuade revenge, it could not move me thus. You must sing a down, a down, and they call you a downer. Oh, how the wheel becomes it. It is the false steward that stole his master's daughter. This nothing's more than matter. Here's Rosemary. That's for remembrance. Pray, love, remember. Here's pansies. That's for thoughts. A document in madness. Thoughts and remembrance. There's fennel for you and columbines. There's rue for you, and here's some for me. We may call it Herb Grace the Sundays. But you must wear your rue with a difference. There's a daisy. I would give you some violets, but they withered all when my father died. But they say he made a good end. For bonny sweet Robin is all my joy. <coughs> Thought and affliction. Passion, hell itself, and she turns to favour and to prettiness. And will he not come again? And will he not come again? No, no, he is dead. Go to thy deathbed, he never will come again. His beard was white as snow, all flaxen was his pole. He is gone, he is gone, and we cast away moan. God have mercy on his soul! And of all Christian souls, I pray God. God be with you. She 
see this. Of God. Laertes, I must commune with your grief, or you deny me right. Go but apart. Make choice of whom your wisest friends you will, and they shall hear and judge twixt you and me. If by direct or collateral hand they find us touched, we will our kingdom give, our crown, our life, all that we can ours, to you in satisfaction. But if not, be you content to lend your patience to us, and we shall jointly labor with your soul to give it due content. Let it be so. <coughs> this means of death, this obscure funeral, no trophy sword nor hatchment are his bones. No noble rite, no formal ostentation. It is a cry to be heard, as twere from heaven to earth, that I must call it in question. So you shall. Where the offence is, let the great axe fall. How now? What news? Letters, my lord. From Hamlet. Laertes, you shall hear them. Leave us. High and mighty, you shall know I am set naked on your kingdom. Tomorrow shall I beg leave to see your kingly eyes, when I shall, first asking your pardon thereunto, recount the occasion of my sudden and more strange return. Hamlet. Are all the rest come back? Or is this some abuse and no such thing? Know you the hand? Is Hamlet's character. Naked. And in a postscript here he says, Alone. Can you advise me? I am lost in it, my lord. But let him come. It warms the very sickness in my heart that I shall live and tell him to his teeth. Thus didst thou. If it be so, will you be ruled by me? Aye, my lord. So you will not o'rule me to a peace. To thine own peace. If he be now returned as checking at his voyage and means no more to undertake it, I will work him to an exploit, now ripen my device under the which he shall not choose, but fall. For his death no wind of blame shall breathe, but even his mother shall uncharge the practice and call it accident. My lord, I will be ruled. The rather if you could devise it so that I might be the organ. It falls right. You have been talked of since your travel much, for your art and exercise in your defense, and for your rapier most especially. Now, out of this... What? Out of this, my lord? Laertes, was your father dear to you? Or are you like a painting of a sorrow, a face without a heart? Why well, ask you that? Hamlet comes back. What would you undertake to prove yourself your father's son in deeds more than in words? To cut his throat in the church. No place should murder sanctuary. Indeed, revenge should know no bounds. But, good Laertes, will you do this? Keep close within your chamber. Hamlet returns, shall know you are come home. We'll put on those shall praise your excellence. Set a double varnish on your fame and wager on your head. He, being remiss, most generous and free from all contrivance, will not peruse the foils, so that with ease, or a little shuffling, you may choose a sword unbated and in a pass of practice, requite him for your father. I'll do it. And for that purpose, I'll anoint my sword. I bought an unction of a mounty back so mortal that if I gall him slightly, it may be death. Let's further think on this. Weigh what convenience both of time and means may fit us to our shape. If this should fail, and our drift look through our bad performance, twere best not a say. Therefore, this project should have a back or second that might hold if this should blast and prove. Soft, let me see. We'll make a solemn wager on your cunnings. I have. When you are hot and dry, let's make your bouts more violent to their head. And that he calls for drink. I'll have prepared him a chalice for the nonce. 
whereon but sitting, if by chance he escaped your venom stuck, our purpose may hold there. How now, sweet queen? One woe doth tread upon another's heels, <coughs> so fast they follow. Your sister is drowned, fair he. Drowned? Drowned? Where? Where is a willow grows, a slant of brook. It shows its hoar leaves in the glassy stream. There with fantastic garlands she did come. There, on the pendant bough, her coronet leaves clambering to hang. An envious sliver broke. And down her weedy trophies and herself fell in the weeping brook. Her clothes spread wide, mermaid-like. A while they bore her up, which time she chanted snatches of old tunes as one incapable of her own distress. And that her garments Heavy with their drink, it pulled poor rich from her melodious lay to muddy death. Uh, she, she is drowned then. Drowned. Drowned. Too much of water has thou poured, Ophelia. Therefore I forbid my tears. I have a speech of fire, vain of flames. Let's follow, Gertrude. So much I had to do to calm his rage that I fear this might give it start again. Therefore, let's follow. Custom hath made it in him the property of easy. Tis e'en so. In the hand of lesser employment hath the daintier sense. But it with his stealing touch had the Lord made in his clutch and had shepherded me into the land as if I had never been sad. That skull had a tongue in it, and could sing once. How the knave jowls it to the ground, as if it were Cain's jawbone that did the first murder? Or that of a courtier, that could say, Good morrow, sweet lord, how dost thou, good lord? A pickaxe and a spade, a spade, oh, for a shrouding sheet. <laughs> a pit of clay for to be made. For such a guest as me. There's another. Why, may not this be the skull of a lawyer? <laughs> Where be his quiddities now? His quillets? His cases? His tenures and his tricks? Why does he suffer this rude knave now to knock him about the sconce with a dirty shovel and not inform him of the action of his battery? I will speak to him. Whose grave is this, sirrah? Mine, sir. 
I think it'd be thine indeed for thou liest in it. No lie out in it, sir, therefore it be not yours. For my part, I do not lie in it, but yet it be mine. Thou oh, does lie in it. <laughs> to be in it and say it is thine, tis for the dead, not for the quick, therefore thou liest. Tis a quick lie, sir. Twill away again from me to you. What man do you dig for? No, for no man, sir. What woman, then? For none, neither. Who's to be buried in it? For one that was a woman, sir, but rest her soul, she's dead. Oh, have some of the neighbours. <clears throat> we must speak by the card, or equivocation will upon us. By the Lord, Horatio, I have noted these three years how the age has grown so picked. The toe of the peasant comes so near the heel of the courtier, he gaffs his kai. How long hast thou been a grave digger? Of all the days in the year I came to it, that day our last King Hamlet overcame Fortinbras. How long since? Cannot <laughs> you tell that? Oh, every fool can tell that was the very day that young Hamlet was born, he that is mad and sent into England. I know. Why was he sent into England? Because he was mad. He shall recover his wits there, or if he do not, it is no great matter there. Why? <laughs> Twill not be seen in him there. There the men are as mad as he. <laughs> How came he mad? Very strangely, they say. How strangely? <laughs> He was losing his wits. Upon what ground? Why, here in Denmark. <laughs> I have been sexton here, man and boy, for 30 years. How long? May a body lie in the ground ere he rot. He faith, if he be not rotten before he die, he shall last you some eight year or nine year. A tenner will last you nine year. Why he more than another? No, oh, why, sir, as I is so tanned with his trade that he will keep out water a great while, and water is a sore decay of a horse and dead bunny. Now, here's a soul skull now, sir. This skull has lain in the earth for three and twenty years. Whose was it? Oh, a horse and mad fellow he was. Whose you think it was? Nay, I know not. A pestilence on him for a mad rogue. Put a flag and a reddish on me head once. This same skull, sir, is Yorick's skull, the king's jester. This? Ain't that. Let me see. <laughs> Alas, poor Yorick. I knew him, Horatio. A man of infinite jest. A most excellent fancy. He had borne me on his back a thousand times. And here hung those lips that I have kissed I know not how oft. Where be your jibes now? Your gambles, your songs, your flashes of merriment that were wont to set a table on raw. None now to mock your own grinning? My chap boy. Get thee to my lady's chamber. Tell her, let her paint an inch thick. To this favour she must come, make her laugh at that. I pray thee, Horatio, tell me one thing. What's that, my lord? Thinks Alexander looked on this fashion in the earth. Even so. And smelt so. Even ha! so, my lord. To what base uses we may return, Horatio? Might not imagination trace the noble dust of Alexander till he find it stopping a bunghole? To to consider too curiously to consider so, my lord. No, we jot faith with modesty enough and likelihood to lead it as thus. Alexander died. Alexander was buried. Alexander returneth into dust. Dust is earth. Of earth we make loan. And of that loan, whereto he was converted, might not we find him stopping a beer barrel? Imperious Caesar, dead and turned to clay, could fill a hole to keep the wind away. Oh, that that earth which held the world at awe should patch a wall to expel the winter floor. 
soft, side to side. Here comes the king, the queen, the courtiers. Who is this they follow and with such maimed rights? This doth betoken the course they follow did with desperate hand for do its own life. It was of some estate. The couch we a while and mark. Sweet. For the sweet. Farewell. I hope thou shouldest have been my Hamlet's wife. The fear of failure. I thought thy bride be to have decked sweet man, and not have strewed thy grave. Oh, treble row. Full ten times treble on that cursed head, did wicked thieve thy most ingenious sense deprive thee of. Hold not the earth a while. And I have caught her once again in thine arms. What is he whose grief bears such an emphasis? Whose praise of sorrow conjures the wounded stars and makes them stand like wonder wounded hares? This is I, Hamlet the Dane! Take my soul! Thou priest, do I not want this thing for you upon my throat? I will fight with him upon this theme until my eyelids no longer wag. My son, what theme? I love to feel you. Forty thousand brothers, with all their quantity, could not make up my sum. What would thou do for her? Oh, he is mad, Laertes. The love of God forbid him. Sweet, show me what thou wilt do. Would fight, would fast, would tear thyself, would drink up easel, eat a crocodile? I'll do it. Thou come here to whine, to outface me with leaping in her grave. Be buried quick with her, and so shall I. And if you prate of mountains, let them throw millions of acres on us. Let the ground, singeing his paint like the burning Dane, make also like a wart. Now wait, I'll mouth as well as thou. This is mere madness. And thus a while the fit shall stay on him. Tell me, sir. For what reason do you use me thus? I loved you ever. But it is no matter. Let Hercules himself do what he may. The cat will mew and dog will have his day. Wait upon him, good Horatio, I pray you. Set your patience in our last night's speech, and put the matter to the present push. Good Gertrude, set some watch over your son. This grave shall have a living monument. An hour of quiet shall we shortly see. Till then, in patience, our proceeding be. Sir, now you shall see the other. Remember you all the circumstance? Remember it, my lord. There's a divinity that shapes our ends. Rough hew them how we will. That is most certain. Dost it not? The things thee stand me now upon. He that hath killed my king and whored my mother, popped in between election and my hopes, thrown out his angle against my proper life with such cousinage. It's not perfect conscience to quit him with this arm, and it's not to be damned to let this canker of nature come and further evil. I am very sorry, Horatio, that in two Laertes I forgot myself. For in the image of my cause, I see the portraiture of his. I will court his favours, but sure, the bravery of his grief did put me into a towering passion, 
Peace. Who comes here? Your lordship is right welcome back to Denmark. I humbly thank you. Dost know this water fly? No, good my lord. Sweet lord, if your lordship were at leisure, I should impart a thing to you from his majesty. I humbly receive it with all diligence of spirit. His majesty bade me signify to you that he hath laid a great wager on your head. Sir, this is the matter. Here is newly come to court laity. Believe me, an absolute gentleman. Indeed. To speak feelingly of him, he is the card or calendar of gentry. You are not ignorant of what excellent laity he is. I dare not confess to that, least I compare to him in excellence. But to know a man is to know himself. I mean, sir, for his weapon, but in the imputation laid upon him by them, in his mead, he's unfellowed. What is his weapon? Rapier and dagger. That's two of his weapons, but well. The king, sir, hath laid that in a dozen passes between yourself and him, he shall not exceed you three hits. He hath laid on twelve for nine, and it would come to immediate trial if your lordship would vouchsafe the answer. Sir, I will walk in the halls if it please his majesty. Tis the breathing time of day with me. Let the foils be bought, the gentleman willing, and the king hold his purpose. I'll win for him and I can. If not, I gain nothing but my shame in the odd hits. I commend my duty to your lordship. To yours. yours. You will lose this wager, my lord. I think not. Since he returned to France, I have been in continual practice. I will win at the odds. Nay, good, but my lord. Thou would not know how ill all's here about my heart. It is no matter. Forget it. But it is the type of gain giving that might trouble a woman. If your mind dislike anything, obey it. I will forestall their repair hither and say you are not fit. Not a whit. You defy all me. There's a special provenance in the fall of a sparrow. If it be now, tis not to come. If it be not to come, it will be now. If it be not now, yet it will come. Readiness is all. Since no man knows aught of what he leaves, what is to leave the times. Come, Hamlet, come. And take this hand from me. Sir, give me your pardon. I have wronged you, but as you are a gentleman, pardon it. Was it Hamlet that wronged Laertes? Never Hamlet. Who does it? Was his madness. If it be so, Hamlet is of the faction that is wronged. His madness is poor Hamlet's enemy. I am satisfied in nature, whose motive in this case should stir me most to my revenge. But in my terms of honour, I stand aloof and will no reconcilement till by some elder masters of known honour I have a voice and precedent of peace to keep my name ungored. But till that time, I do receive your offered love, like love, and do not wrong it. I embrace it freely. And will gladly this brother's wager play. Give us the foils. Come on. Come. One for me. I'll be your foil, Laertes. For... In my ignorance, your skill shall, like a star in the darkest night, strike fiery off indeed. Do you mock me, sir? No, by this hand. Young Osric, give him the foils. Cousin Hamlet, you know the wager? Aye, my lord. Your grace hath laid odds on the weaker side. I do not fear it. I have seen you both. But since he is betted, we have therefore odds. <coughs> this is too heavy. Let me see another. 
I like this one well. These foils have all legs. I with my lord. Set me the stoops of wine upon that table. If Hamlet give the first or second hit, we'll quit an answer of the third exchange. Let all the battlements their ordnance fire. The king shall drink to Hamlet's better breath, and in the cup an union shall he throw, richer than that which four kings in Denmark's crown have worn. Now give me the cup. Let the kettle to the trumpet speak, the trumpet to the cannoneer without, the cannon to the heavens, and the heavens to earth. Now the king danced to Hamlet. Come, begin, and you, the judges, keep a wary eye. Come, sir. Come, my lord. One, no! Judgment? A hit, a very palpable hit. Well, again. Stay, Hamlet. Here for my help. Sit it down. I will play this bout first. Come, sir. Another hit! What a say touch. you? A touch, I do confess. Our son shall win. He's fat and scant his brain. Here, Hamlet. Take my neck and rub thy brows. The queen carouses to thy fortune. Good madam! No, Gertrude, do not drink. I will, my lord. I pray you pardon me. My lord, I'll hit him now. I do not think it. Come, sir, for a third. You do dally. I pray you pass with all violence. I'm afraid you make a wanton of me. Say you so. Come on. Nothing, neither way. Ah! Have back now. Part them, they are incensed. Hey, come again! Look, to the queen their home. They bleed on both sides. How is it, my lord? How is my Stricken as a woodcock to my own spring, and justly killed with my own treachery. How does the queen? She swoons to see them bleed. No. No. The drink. The drink. Oh, my dear Hamlet. The drink. The drink. I'm poisoned. Villain! Let the doors be locked. Treachery, seek it out. It is here, Hamlet. Hamlet, thou art slain. In thee there is not half an hour of life. A mortal instrument is in my hand, unbated and envenomed. The foul practice has turned itself on me. Lo, here I lie, never to rise again. Thy mother's poison can no more. The king, the king's to blame. The point, envenomed too. And then venom to thy work! Oh. Will you defend me, friends? I am but hurt! Yeah. Now, <laughs> mistress, damn this murdering dame, drink of thy potion! Is thy union here? Or with my mother? Yes, justly, sir. It is a poison tempered by himself. Exchange forgiveness with me, noble Hamlet. Know that mine and my father's death come not upon me, nor thine on me. Let heaven free thee from I follow thee. I am dead, Horatio. Oh, wretched queen! That's the all I could tell you. Let it be. Very sure I am dead. Thou livest. Report me and my cause aright to the unsatisfied. Never believe it. I am more antique Roman than a Dane. Here's your tablet left. Yes, 
Oh, that's a man. Give me the cup. By heaven, I'll have it. Let go! Oh, good for a ship. What a wounded name. Things standing thus unknown shall live behind me. If thou did ever hold me in thy heart, I'd send thee from Felicity <coughs> along. And in this harsh world, draw thy breath in pain to tell my story. What warlike noise is this? Young Fordham Bass, with conquest come from Poland to the ambassadors of England gives this warlike story. Oh, I die. The potent poison quite overcoats my spirit. But I prophesy the election lights on Fulton Brass. He has my dying voice. So tell him, with all the occurrence more or less that have solicited, the rest is silent. And who cracks a noble heart? The night sweet prince. And flights of angels sing thee to thy rest. Why does the drum come hither? Where is the sight? What is it ye would see? Of what of woe and wonder? Cease your search. This quarry cries on heaven. Proud death, what feast is to warden thine eternal cell? Thou so many princes at a shot so bloodily hast struck. How these things came about. So shall you hear of carnal, bloody, and unnatural acts, of accidental judgments, casual slaughters, of deaths put on by cunning and forced cause, and in this upshot. Purposes mistook fallen on the inventor's reeds. All this can I truly deliver. Let us haste hear of it, and bring the noblest to the audience. For me, with sorrow, I embrace my fortune. I have some rights of memory to this kingdom, which now to claim my vantage doth invite me. Of that I shall have also cause to speak. And from his mouth whose voice will draw on more, but let this be presently performed. Even when men's minds are wild, lest more mischance on plots and errors happen. Be a Hamlet, like a soldier to the stage. Take up the bodies, such a sight as this becomes the field. But here shows much amiss. Go, 